In today's video, we're talking more about Shane Pinto and the Ottawa Senators. Apparently, the Philadelphia Flyers are heavily interested if a trade is something the Sens need to end up doing. We also have some updates on the Mike Babcock situation in Columbus. Uh, we also have some other updates around the league, including some potential signings, and the Boston Bruins have released new jerseys for the upcoming season. A lot more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of things to talk about here today. I do want to start off quickly talking about the new Boston Bruins jerseys that were just released here uh, just this evening. Uh, they're the Centennial jerseys, the 100th anniversary uh, season here for the Boston Bruins. Uh, as you can see, I'll show you a picture here. Uh, they have the home, away, and alternates. Uh, I believe the alternate jerseys are going to be used for games uh, against our other original six teams. Um, certainly heavy on the gold. Well, they certainly uh, have, a, have a little bit of a different look here, throwback version. Uh, the Bruins had a little bit of a fashion show uh, this evening, and then everything was uh, put on line. I do have an affiliate link in the top uh, pinned comment, which is through NHL Shop, which is where they're exclusively sold for the time being. So if you're a Bruins fan or if you're just a jersey collector in general and you think these are some pretty nice jerseys, uh, then certainly check them out. I uh, consider using the affiliate link, which obviously helps support the channel and helps you get some great merchandise as well. So uh, if you like the Bruins jerseys, certainly go ahead and check that out. Uh, some other news around the league. We may have a signing coming to the Minnesota Wild. It sounds like uh, UFA forward Jujar Kara is going to end up in Minnesota one way or another. Uh, he may or may not get a contract right off the bat. He may end up having to go as a PTO. There is word that they basically have a verbal agreement on a one-year, two-way deal. Uh, but apparently uh, there might be some immigration issues that might result in him having to take a PTO to start and get the contract later. I'm not sure exactly the timing of everything, but it looks like Kara will end up with the Minnesota Wild one way or another. And even if he goes on a PTO, it sounds like the intention is to sign him to a one-year, two-way deal. I mean, he's got size, penalty killing, uh, can play in the bottom six, uh, you know, play center. So lots of things there to like, uh, just as an extra depth option uh, for sure. So that looks like it's going to be happening. Of course, we know the LA Kings and the Arizona Coyotes uh, soon have their preseason games over in Australia. Uh, and unfortunately, top prospect defenseman Brant Clark will not be traveling with the Los Angeles Kings. Both teams have put out their rosters in the last... I think day or so, confirming which players they were sending uh, down under to Australia for these, uh, you know, promotional uh, exhibition games here in the preseason. Uh, Clark was supposed to play. They are very much NHL. Um, you know, heavy in the in the rosters. It's not like they're going, you know, light with NHL talent and going heavy on like prospects. Like sometimes you see in the preseason, they were sending majority of all of their top talented players, including some top prospects as well. Uh, I'm sure Clark's probably disappointed because it'd be quite a trip and an experience for him. But he is uh, nursing an injury, which they felt would be better for him to stay back with the club in Los Angeles and do some, uh, uh, you know, rehab and treatment to be uh, to be ready for uh, the other part of the preseason and training camp once they return. So, um, unfortunately, Brant Clark won't be joining the team for the games in Australia. Now, we had I, – this is a bit of an update on, on the Babcock situation, but it's not really a clear-cut one with full details. But earlier tonight, a few hours ago, there was a post on – uh, Twitter, I guess X it's called now, X formerly known as Twitter. Um, I'll probably still call it Twitter for some time because it was Twitter for so long. Um, but Dan Kinjerski, who runs National Hockey Now, um, the website, which basically has um, team affiliated sites across uh, Canada and the United States, um, had a post indicating that they had sources out of Columbus indicating that there might be smoke kind of brewing on the situation which we kind of knew he didn't really leave a lot of details and he said one of his reporters jimmy murphy who runs boston hockey now was on top of it uh, talking to sources and i kind of was hoping we'd have more information sometime into the evening but then eventually they took the tweet down um and i guess the reason for that was that they didn't have uh, according to their sources, I just think the sources didn't want much information out there just yet. And it sounds like some people were already running with the story, which there really wasn't like a full story. So essentially, they just kind of made it sound like something was brewing. And 
Um, I decided tonight that we don't really have like a full update except for what they're hearing, which we don't know all the details. Uh, it sounds like first of the week we're probably going to have something happen. There was a comment from uh, from John Davidson, who's the president of Hockey Ops, uh, and all he had said was that they were regarding the Babcock situation is that be- between he and ownership and Yarmo Kukalana that they had talked about it. And that there would be, that's all he would say. He he didn't really want to elaborate on it, of course, uh, which you can understand. So clearly, it just seems like this is a really awkward situation. And, um, you know, based on the words chosen by National Hockey Now, it it just made it sound like, and this, my interpretation at least, would have sounded like they were hearing Babcock was getting fired. Now, they did not say that. I'm not trying to put words in their mouth. It's just the way that the tweet went out and the information that was posted it just kind of led you to think that. But they didn't say that exactly. So it's kind of, you know, sometimes when you get reporters out there kind of dropping hints, but they don't have full, um, you know, you know everything from their sources to, to post the full story yet. So ultimately, you know, it sounds like we're going to get details soon. But just to give you my take on this after thinking more about it, and certainly looking at uh, more opinions out there, doesn't it seem with this whole Babcock situation that there's really only one way forward? I mean, ultimately, you have to think that it's, if they decided that Babcock was going to stay on, don't you think it's going to be a really awkward situation? I'm sure that Mike Babcock right now does not appreciate as much as, you know, I'm sure... Obviously, some people that are uncomfortable and think he did wrong don't care, obviously, because he should be, you know, facing the music if he did wrong. But I'm sure he's probably, it's hard sometimes not to think, who did I upset? Who did I, you know, who caused this trouble for me, basically, right? Um, You know, and knowing that it's likely one of the younger players, it just, I don't know. I just just think it would be a real awkward dressing room. Um, you know, knowing how everything went down here, it just seems weird. Now, I did see another Sportsnet article earlier regarding this situation from Luke Fox, and it basically, it just kind of the whole premise of his article, which uh, I can share with you in the, in the pinned comment as well below, was that Mike Babcock's not the only one that should kind of be facing the music here. And I, I, Luke made some great points that I wanted to share. So, look, think of it this way. Yarmo Kekalainen is the third longest tenured GM in the league. Okay, he's been in this post for 11 years. Out of those 11 years, they haven't made the playoffs in the past three, which they've been obviously going through, like I guess you'd call a bit of a rebuild. And they've only made the playoffs five out of the 11 years. So that's not a great success rate, okay? Babcock is his fourth coach. A lot of GMs only get to hire usually two. By the time they're on to three, they're generally done. Um, so he's on to his fourth coach, you know, and this team has a history of players wanting out. We've seen a lot of it. Like look back to Dubois, look back to Bobrovsky, um, you know, like in Panarin, you know, I, maybe not all the same reason, but they've had a tough time keeping players that we can say. And now you've got a, a good amount of young talent there that really I think the Jackets could have a real good team in a few years. And you bring in a guy like Babcock with all his history, and you have to know that everything he says and does is going to probably be heavily scrutinized, and it's not going to take a lot to create a big kerfuffle situation like we have here because of his past. So ultimately, you're subjecting your young players to this coach who has a history of, you know, not doing well, and to say the least, with some of these young guys. So I think Yermo Kekalainen is going to probably be just as much at fault here, assuming that Babcock has to go. Now, I wouldn't be shocked if Babcock takes the fall and he ends up gone, and that's all that happens. I don't know how involved John Davidson and ownership would have been with this hire. I guess depending on how involved they were may determine if they feel the need to come down hard on Kekalainen or not. Because if they were, you know, involved the whole way and totally supported it, then, you know, obviously they're just as much to blame too. But it just seems really bizarre. Like, of all the options you could have had to hire a head coach, 
This is the road you go down. And it just, to me, had disaster written on it from the beginning. Like, you know, just looking at their roster and a lot of the youth. And, you know, I know Babcock said a lot of the right things when he was first introduced, but we're not even into the season yet. Training camp hasn't even started yet, and we already have a scandal. It just seems like, and it might not seem like a big deal to some, but at the end of the day, if his players feels like he was inappropriate with them, that's really all that matters. It doesn't matter how I feel or how you feel or anybody else feels. It's between him and the players. And if they didn't like it and are not comfortable with him coaching them, that's that's all that matters here at the end of the day. And it's just causing, um, you know, a real issue. Like, what are they going to do? Uh, this, get ready to open training camp next week, and they got to get rid of their head coach. I mean, obviously, they're going to have no choice but to take an assistant coach and to promote them to the head coaching role. Maybe they do it on an interim basis. But it's just going to give a big distraction and an unnecessary thing here to this team to start the season off. It's just not – you're not getting your off on the right foot at all. So as much as the information out earlier between what Dan and Jimmy had to say in National Hockey Now, like I said, their tweets were kind of like – alluding to something coming, but it never came. Then they decided to take it down because people were starting to write stories about it. And they said that there really wasn't enough information to be a story yet. I'm like, well, maybe you shouldn't have tweeted anything. Uh, if you didn't want, if you didn't really have anything, you could really share in full details. But to say that there's smoke and smoke could lead to fire, that makes you think the interpretation is that He's in trouble, and he's going to get fired. At least that's what people are thinking. That was my first thought. I may or may not be right, but at the end of the day, that's what he led people to think. And I won't be shocked if that ends up being the outcome. So we'll see what happens, but that's the latest on the Babcock saga in Columbus. As I mentioned as well, there's a lot of talk about the Senators and Shane Pinto, this whole situation. Um, sounds like the Philadelphia Flyers are heavily interested and are watching this situation closely. Now, Anthony Sanfilippo, who is a, a good beat reporter for the uh, Flyers and uh, writes for Crossing Broad, good podcast with uh, Snow the Goalie. Um, he's usually got a good pulse on the team, and he put out information earlier saying that uh, the you know Flyers fans should watch this situation with Pinto very closely because it sounds like the Flyers have heavy interest should Ottawa get to the point that they feel like they have to make a trade. I've seen different trade proposals all over social media today regarding these two teams. Some saying that you know they should go after Scotty Lawton. Some say Travis Konechny. I've seen some people say that all kinds of different things. Now, on the last 32 Thoughts podcast, which was, I believe, yesterday, Elliot Friedman, who also has a good pulse on all this, says that if the Senators, um, they, their first preference, of course, is still to sign this kid. They, they really like Pinto. They do not want to give him up. But if they get to that point that they feel like they have no choice, then they're probably going to be telling teams to get Pinto, you have to take another contract that we don't like. So that led a lot of people to think Matthew Joseph. So then, of course, they've still got lots of prospects that are going to have a hard time cracking this lineup because of all the guys that have taken spots and signed long term. So I've seen some people proposing, well, maybe they package Pinto with Joseph and maybe another prospect. Maybe it's... Maybe it's Tyler Boucher, who obviously has, you know, his father has connections to that team. Brian Boucher with the with the Flyers. Maybe it's uh, I don't know Zach Ostapchuk. Maybe it's uh, yeah, Lassie Thompson, Jacob Bernard Donker. Who knows? But you could throw in a prospect for sure. You have enough of them, and you could probably give the Flyers an option of like four or five, and say pick one uh, with Joseph and Pinto. If you're getting a guy like Travis connecting. Now, I wouldn't do that deal for Scott Lawton. No offense to him. He's a good player, good bottom six. Maybe a second-line player in some teams. He wouldn't be in Ottawa. And I don't think they should give up on a, a young, you know, high-end prospect like, well, not really prospect, but a high, high-end young player like Pinto, who's already got a 20-goal season to his name, and he's only got one season. So he's bound to get better still. He's nowhere close to hitting the ceiling. So if you can get a guy like Konechny, uh, who can come with a little bit more contract, uh, a little more term, uh, good value in his contract, and uh, you know, bring a little bit of an edge to his. Like he's not afraid to play with an edge. I, I really think he could be a good fit there in Ottawa. Maybe Dominic Kubalik becomes expendable too. Um, 
you know, um, you know, maybe Kuba Leaks to gotta go because at the end of the day, uh, it's gonna be tough to get all these guys the proper offensive time, right? You could put Konechny in the top six, maybe Tarasenko now becomes a third line player. But then, you know, they still have Ridley Gregg as the third line center option if they trade a Pinto. That there's lots of moving parts here, lots of options. I don't know. I'm, I'm still not convinced a trade's gonna happen, but the Flyers are clearly one of the teams that makes a lot of sense. And clearly, based on the reporters, they have a lot of a lot of interest. And if it gets to that, I think Ottawa is only doing this trade if they feel like they can get an upgrade. And I can think, well, I know they had interest in Lawton before. Uh, there's connection between Lawton and DJ Smith. Um, but again, I don't. I'm not trading Pinto for Lawton unless you're getting more than Lawton. I just don't know. Besides the guy that like connect me, what else they would want out of Philly. So, because Philly's going to want to keep a lot of their young players because they're rebuilding. So it's not like they're going to offer up Cutter Goche or something like that. They're not going to do that. That would be great, but that's not going to happen. So, at the end of the day, here um, could we see a trade? Sure. And these are the proposals that are being tossed around. I still think that signing is more likely. A different trade to make the space is likely what Dorian is working on in Ottawa. But time will tell. Do you think Pinto is going to end up in a trade? If it goes to Philly, what kind of proposal are we going to end up seeing? Could it involve a guy like Konechny and really help the Senators take another big step forward and uh, you know add another guy who could be a, a part of their core for quite a bit yet yeah, where he still has a lot of years of playing and some term on his contract. So let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.